channel addiction, Dallas Weaver. Um, it is April 7th, and for most of you catfishermen that know, catfishing season is underway. Uh, right now, it's, we're finally getting into the most beautiful days of spring, are just now coming in. Uh, it's about a little after 1 o'clock. Uh, and it is 73 degrees, low wind, it is beautiful. Uh, we're gonna go try and uh, see if we can't catch something at Smithville today. Uh, we're gonna try up there the north end where the Platte River dumps in. Uh, kind of my favorite spot, I always catch fish there. Uh, I don't know how bait's gonna be, but I brought some extra bait that I caught uh, a couple times before. Um, you guys might see that in the videos uh, but yeah and another reminder uh, for those of you that don't know I am an avid, tur avid turkey hunter the turkey season's coming up it starts here in Missouri uh, April 15th which is on a Monday but I won't be able to go that that week because I got to work of course uh, but I will be going down there that Thursday and hunting Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, so stay tuned and be ready for those videos. Uh, hope we can get some action on that too as well. So uh, I wanted to make a point too and all the flooding and stuff that's going on. My heart goes out to everybody that's that's you know a victim of all of that. Uh, just now going across the Black River and it's coming up a little bit too. So. Yeah, I just want to, you know, make a point to show my condolences to all those that, you know, have lost family members or have lost, you know, their belongings and everything in that flood. Um, that's a terrible thing to go through, and uh, I don't wish that upon anybody. Um, but hopefully we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, and, and hopefully that those flood waters are going down. And... Uh, Said, hopefully we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and things will get better hopefully soon so but anyway i'm gonna go and head uh and get some fuel and get everything ready and yeah i'll get back with you when we get to the lake and hopefully we can get some catfish in the boat maybe some bigger ones that's what i'm after today is hopefully we can get some bigger ones so stay tuned guys channel addiction hey guys um we're out here finally up here in the north end of Smithville. Um, we went up there by the bridge, and uh, sure enough, the bait has finally made it up there. Um, before I couldn't, I couldn't catch anything up there. I've caught just a few little crappie or whatever, and, and you know, like I said, here in Missouri, you're not allowed to use crappie for bait. So, um, but now I cast it up there. The water has warmed up a lot compared to the last time I was here. About a week or two ago um yeah fix my camera here it's getting a little blurry for some reason but uh anyway we made it out here it is beautiful it's like 70 something 73 degrees the water like i said has gotten a lot warmer it's 62 63 degrees somewhere around there um just got all, I went ahead and just put all fresh bait on. I've got some frozen shad uh, right there. But I caught a few little guys and a couple bigger guys. Got them in the bait cooler. So I'm going to try all fresh bait. What I'm using is uh, basically just shad fillets. I've got one whole bait on um, and uh, shad heads. And in case you guys don't know what shad fillets are, what I do is basically just fillet out your shad and it will look something like this. And just hook that two or three times. You know, this also still has the, the guts on it, as you can see. So, uh, anyway, with no further ado, let's get casted out and see what we can catch. Hopefully this thing won't get blurry again. I'll put it back up here. I don't have a phone holder in here. I didn't bring my GoPro like I told myself I was going to do. So 
Yeah. Oh, before I cast out, I was going to show you my equipment, what I'm using. Um, this is my brand new setup. This guy right here. It's a Pisifin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Let me know if I am or not. But it's a Pisifin Chaos 60. And it's got the 531 gear ratio in it. And uh, it's one of my newest reels. I'm trying out this year. You can get I got it on Amazon for 50 something bucks. I mean, they're they're pretty cheap, but they're almost identical. They've got the same gear ratio as your Abu Garcia 6500s. And speaking of that, it's what I'm using here is an Abu Garcia 6500 on a Rippin' Lips Super Cat series rod. And this one is on I just got had this given given to me. It's an Ozark rod. Uh, it's got all stainless steel eyes on it. And then I've got a Abu Garcia 7000 on a Whisker Seeker. And then this one's a Cat Max reel on a another Rippin' Lips rod. This one's an Abu Garcia 6600 Ambassador on a big game, Berkeley big game rod. And this one's my brother-in-law's. It's another Abu Garcia 6500 on a shakespeare wildcat rod so that's my setup right now i'm going to be probably ordering some more of these pisifin rods or pisifin reels i'm pretty happy with them so uh anyway let's get casted out and see what we can catch if i get this back up here for you Big fish over there. I'll go ahead and set the pictures on everything I can. The only one I'm probably not going to be able to is at 7,000 because it's it takes a lot to set that clicker off. tell you too, with the water being this warm, the catfish are in the shallows right now. So I'm probably fishing in three to four foot of water or less. You get this whole bait out here. I'm doing here is whenever that bait and that weight hits the water and being this shallow too it'll go into the water and actually sink itself in the mud so all I'm doing is getting it out of the mud so that way the catfish can smell that bait
Okay. We are officially all casted out. Um, I'll start getting into fish. I'll get back with you guys. We're going to give this spot 15 or 20 minutes and, uh, yeah. See what happens. Stay tuned, guys. guys uh, just moved to a different spot a little out here in the open winds blowing a little more uh, just right off the channel I put some baits in the channel and then up here in the shallows it drops off about 10 foot right over here and it's probably oh three to four foot over here um, yeah just got set up and caught our first fish it's a pretty Pretty nice average channel, pretty, he's pretty fish. He's probably, oh, two, maybe two and a half pounds. Uh, but yeah, it's slowly picking up, I don't know. Oh, now I'm getting a bite over here. This is turning out to be a better spot so far. But uh, I'm going to put you guys back here and see if I can get this. Uh... I hit a button on the, on the phone and it turned the video off. I think I hit the sleep button or whatever on it. Next time, I promise, I'll try to bring my GoPro. That way, you know, I can take a lot better footage and not be fumbling around with the phone. Like I said, I don't have a phone holder in here or anything. I've just got you sitting on my dash, so. Uh, yeah, we got that fish released. I only got that one bite on this one, and then I got another bite over here on the right. That's just the boat moving. But yeah, I was on the uh, wildcat rod, and he quit, so. Trying to run clickers on everything because the bites are still a little bit finicky. So my way of thinking is, you know, if they hit on it and they don't feel a tug, then maybe they'll keep chomping on it and, yeah, get a hook set. But so far, fishing isn't the greatest or isn't very good at all, really. This is the best spot I've been in so far. I had the most bites and caught a fish out of it. That's three bites and one fish. The other ones I had a few bites, just it sucked. The water temperature was about 60 something. Out here it's about 58, so. And the water's a little bit rougher. You can feel the cool air coming off the water. It actually feels good compared to what I was in, so. This spot here is known to have a few blues just because it's right off the channel. I had a buddy of mine about two, two, three weeks ago come out here in this area right here and put a few baits in the uh, in the channel and then a few baits out here in the shallows, kind of like what I'm doing. And he caught a 20 something pound blue and, a, and another, oh, I'm, I guess about a 15 pound blue. And I have yet to catch a blue out of Smithville. I know they're here. I know they are. But, I mean, I've seen the pictures last weekend. I know they're here. I just, I have not caught one yet. So far out of Smithville, the biggest fish I've caught is that 13 and a half pound channel. So, 
I know the Slake's got them all, it's just, it's got way more channels than it does anything else. So it's just a matter of weaning out how many channels you catch, you know, for a blue or flathead or whatever. That's fishing, fishing you just gotta be patient and wait them out. Hoping to be able to keep the camera on and see if maybe you guys can get some action. I was hoping it was going to start picking up. But. I think the next spot I'm going to try and go on back here and, and try the shallow water wind sweat banks and see what that does. So, got an alarm that's about ready to go off. I think I'm going to do the old cigarette trick, smoke a cigarette, and when I'm done smoking, we'll move. I don't want to miss out on a big fish here. That next spot, I can almost kind of do the same thing, too. I can put a few baits out in the channel, and then put some out in the shallow water where that windswept bank is. I gotta leave here about close to five o'clock or six o'clock, so I don't have a whole lot of time to fish, but Last video, I've been I was talking about this stuff. It's called No Trace by Ripping Lips. I've been using it for a while, and and uh, I'll be honest, I haven't really seen much of a difference. But um, I don't know. I've been using it. You know, I just sprayed all my hands and and you know wipe my hands around with it a little bit. Before I touch my bait so as you know I am a smoker so I figured I'd give it a shot it's supposed to eliminate all of your human scents and you know cigarette smoke gas all that stuff so but like I said I haven't really seen much of a difference yet so Can't tell if he's got a gas motor or a uh, 
controlling motor on, but he ain't moving very fast. Down there around the spot that I was going to go to next. See what he does. Tell you what, those pistol fin rods are pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with them. Pistol fin reels, I'm sorry. I keep saying rods. There's a snag. It's one thing that you know if you're a catfisherman or not. If you don't lose a bunch of gear. Weights and whatnot. You're not a cat fisherman. <laughs> Dumps up here. I'll leave those out while I'm redoing this one. What I like to do, I like to. Oh, that was a bite. No, what I like to do with this line whenever I do break one, I like to check for burrs because those are going to be your weak spots in your line. So, if you're catching a fish and it breaks off, that's probably why because you got a burr in it. So, I'll show you how to. I'll go back to what I was talking about earlier about how I rig. Catfish rods. I've got my two ounce weight here. All I do is run it in, let it drop. I got an eight or nine knot hook, Cat Max hook, circle hook. I run it in through the loop and just take the hook and I twist it about ten times. You know, the way I count is just one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the little loop that's up here where your eye is, just run it through that loop and tighten it down, and then just do that twice. Some, some would call a regular fish, fisherman's knot. Tighten it up, push your access down, take it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, take your tail, run it 
into that little loop, grab it and tighten it. What I do, I just take my fingernail and just push it down. Oh, it came undone here, I gotta redo it. I like to put two just for safe measure. If you can see it, that's kind of what it looks like. And then you're Weight will just come up and, and sit on the top of your eye on your hook. It'll look just like that. That way, when your bait hits the water, a lot of times you're your weight will come up and be away from your bait. That way your bait will sink in the mud and your bait will kind of sit on top of the mud. You don't want your bait down in the mud. It'll look like just like that. Again, in case you're wondering, the rules, regular rules out here on Smithville is you can't fish without any more than three rods. There's another snag. But if you label all your rods with your name, address, phone number, and then your conservation number, you can have basically as many rods as you want, and then they consider it a... Uh, landline basically oh my get a little bit tighter wrap your line so it doesn't mess with your Reel or ruin your reel. Ah, oh, there it comes. This will be this time I got. I got broke out here. I had three over there in the cove. Check the purrs. Whenever you have a burr, all you got to do is just take that cut that line off. In this case, I think the weight was actually the culprit on what got caught because my knot was still on there. And the weight probably just slipped through the knot. That's probably why it was so hard to break too, so. Okay.
down. Down with your fingernails. And there you have it. I'm gonna try putting a big chunk on and see what that does. Dumb, might be smart, I don't know, we'll see. As Grandpa used to say, big fish, or big big bait, big fish. Which is not always true, I found that out. Caught a lot of small fish on big bait. Man, this is bad. This is really bad. This will be number six. Oh, man. Not good, guys. But that's catfishing. If you're a cat fisherman and fitting fishing stumps. You're gonna get a lot of this. But that's why you come prepared. There's a good bird. I'm gonna cut it off right there. in the future. The other two come in smooth. Hate having to do this all the time. But when I get to the next spot, I like to be ready. Some would say that's why you don't fish with so many poles, but fishing with more poles improves your chances, in my eyes. Get more baits out there, and plus it's it's kind of fun when you get into a spot where you're catching a lot of fish and getting a lot of bites.
All right, well now I'm gonna anchor up and uh, get to my next spot down there and see if they're maybe on the windswept bank. So stay tuned, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> I had uh, went to that spot, got tied up, just starting to get all my poles out, and I don't know if some cold front came through or it was just the back wind or whatever behind these clouds but that wind picked up like crazy and it yeah my boat the anchors was not holding the boat at all this boat in the wind is like a sail so um yeah i think we got time for maybe one more spot it's almost six o'clock now uh yeah i got something to do at seven o'clock so yeah, we're going to try one more spot and uh, see what happens. It's not a good day. Honestly, I should have gotten out a little earlier, but I had a lot of stuff to do this morning. So, yeah, just the way it goes sometimes. Everybody knows that when you're a cat fisherman or a fisherman in general. But then again, some people have all the luck, too. <laughs> so... But stick with me guys, we'll try one more spot and hopefully it'll be the hot spot and we can get a few more fish in the boat. Yeah, change our luck around. If not, oh well, it's always a good day on the water. So, uh, stay tuned guys. Well, the last spot didn't uh, yield anything. Uh, it was just a short trip, I didn't really have time to go to the places that I wanted to go. Um, it's still a beautiful day to go fishing. Like I said, it's, it's always a good day when you're out on the water, in my opinion. So, uh, we're headed back home. Um, yeah, I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Like I said, stay tuned uh, for some uh, turkey hunting videos coming up. Uh, turkey season's coming up. Uh, so, uh, stay tuned for those. And uh, if you like my videos, Please like and subscribe. 